Good morning, Pat. Hi, Beth. <laughs> There's Sandy. There's Lindy. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Leo. We'll wait just a few minutes here. Good to, good to see your presence here. <clears throat> Marsha. Hi, Marsha. How are you doing? I want to give you a heads up while we're waiting for people to come in today. Uh, we'll be taking some prayer requests. Hi, Sue. There's Terry. And uh, a couple of things that we're going to talk about by way of announcement. And uh, so maybe as, as we're waiting, good morning, Terry. Hi, Amy. Uh, as we're waiting uh, for people to come in, think about maybe a praise, some prayer requests, and uh, we'll do our best to, uh, to address all of those too. Again, I apologize for me doing this. It's, it's the way my eyes are see who's coming in so we'll wait a few more minutes <clears throat> Somebody have a praise the Lord this morning you'd like to share with us. Something good that's happened to you. Something you're thankful for. I'm thankful for the technology that we have to do this. That we can, uh, to some degree, uh, stay in, in touch with one another. I'm glad for some of the creative ideas that are coming out of this. And we're going to tell you about one of those in just a moment. There's Crystal, there's Brian. Good to see you here this morning. Uh, that's what I'm thankful for. Is there anybody else? Go ahead and just type it in. There's my dear. Thankful for being born at such a time as this. How about that? Yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, if we ever think that we were born too early or too late, no, nah, I used to feel that way. I used to feel I had kind of an old soul. I guess I do. But uh, thankful for, to be born at such a time as this. There's, there's Ed, there's Ann. Nancy's here too. Melody said, I'm blessed to be surrounded by amazing Christian friends. Boy, isn't that the truth. Health. Brian, thankful for health. Thank God for that. Thankful that we can, as I say, sit up and take nourishment this morning, right? And we can get together like this. This is awesome. Awesome. And along with that, we have uh, some requests. And first on the list, uh, I made a, a robocall yesterday. Some of you may not be familiar or may not be aware yet that Benita Jervis passed away. On Friday morning, uh, the viewing will be, or the uh, funeral and the viewing is private for the family, which is understandable at this time. Brian, by the way, says, thankful for nurses and first responders. Absolutely. Hi, Elaine. Elaine's joined us here as well. And uh, I am probably missing some. Terry Lynn, praising God for helping me breathe every day and healing me. Thankful that our Lord is healer, huh? Amen. So we do need to, pardon me, I'm going to jump around a lot. Uh, Benita Jervis's family, uh, we need to lift them up in prayer. She was a great, great grandmother. So there's a, a large group of people that, uh, from what I'm told, that really depended upon Bonita as their rock. I only met Bonita a few times in the last uh, weeks of her life. But uh, we did have one time where she was very clear and we had a wonderful conversation. We were able to pray together. 
I heard a lot of good stories about her uh, from Pastor Dan, told me how she served on the board faithfully and uh, was always uh, saying we can do it, coming alongside with the encouragement. So that's a, that's a wonderful uh, legacy for all of those who are related to Benita to have. And so we're thankful for that. But we remember the family today in prayer. There's Anna, uh, Anna Hummer, another prayer request back in the hospital again. And I don't know if you're, I guess you're still there, uh, but she's able to join us this morning for church. Uh, her asthma once again uh, just got too much and she had to uh, go in for, for care. So we need to lift up Anna this morning as well. So how about some other prayer requests this morning? While we're waiting, let me make a few announcements. Uh, we had originally planned our annual business meeting for two weeks from today. Uh, that's going to be postponed until further notice. We'll get to that. Uh, no problem there. Also, there's a board meeting that was scheduled for uh, this coming Thursday. We're going to put that off too. For now, we're going to make it next Thursday. And if we have to push it ahead, a little bit further we can do that too you know these kind of the things uh, it'll all get done Trenton Rots and Tony uh, Moberly we need to remember in prayer we've been praying for the two of those uh, yes Brian Brian's aunt uh, uh, is that that's Linda Hansot right uh, her family and Pat's brother Paul as he's going through this awful cancer and Sue uh, I know you're here. Do we have an update on your brother, on Dennis? Maybe you could let us know that. We've been praying for Dennis as well. Um, also, some of you will know Nancy uh, Burkholder. She uh, used to attend regularly, from, from what I understand. Nancy and I talk together on the phone quite a bit. And uh, she's at uh, Episcopal Square, and uh, her... Her memory is, is poor, and she gets confused, and she's suffering with a lot of anxiety, especially through this troubled time. So uh, remember, Nancy, we, we pray together quite often, and we've tried to arrange to get her rides to church. The only problem is that she forgets that she had called somebody to go to church. So it's a kind of a touchy area there, but let's, let's lift Nancy Burkholder in prayer today as well. Elaine says, uh, co-worker's mom, lung cancer. Okay. Okay. Wait a minute if there are any others, and then we'll, we'll go to the Lord in prayer, okay? We don't have to wait on God uh, for the technology to catch up, do we? We can just come to him in the name of Jesus. What a privilege that is. Can somebody say amen to that, huh? What a blessing it is that we have a loving Heavenly Father that is just waiting to hear from us, and he wants to hear from us. And he wants to hear about the little things and the big things, anything. Uh, Melody is saying here, uh, praying for answers for what our teaching future looks like. And <laughs> Anxiety Central, that's teachers and students, right? Uh, yes. Yes. Hi, Linda. Welcome. Good to see you here. Mm. We're just finishing up for those of you who are just coming into the room. Uh, prayer requests and praises and anything that you want to share will allow a little little time for this. Uh, the message today is probably a little shorter to allow for some interaction time here. And uh, so we, we don't want to rush over this. I'd like to hear one more praise. We need to hear one more praise, don't we? I think we do. I'm, thank why we're, I'm thankful for the community in Shippensburg. We're seeing some true colors come out people that are uh, giving and donating their time 
their efforts to make sure that if there are people that are uh, inclined to fall through the cracks that we can do everything we can to help them uh, it's been very very encouraging to see there's a lot in this area for people that need help and the churches are leading the way and that's extremely encouraging okay let's let's just take a moment and go to the lord in prayer and if we if we have a couple uh, requests come in after that that's fine we can we can take those on a case by case all right let's uh let's go to the lord in prayer shall we Father God, we're so thankful for the privilege of coming to you. And thank you, Lord, that we have this ability and this way to get together. Lord, we just thank you and praise you because you are worthy of praise. Lord, before we come to you with the first request, we just simply come to you in thanksgiving and honor, uh, magnifying your name, lifting you up because you are worthy of praise. Thank you, Father, that we have an advocate with you. That's the Son, Jesus Christ, your only Son, fully God and fully man, that walked in flesh just like, just like we do, yet he did not sin, tempted in all ways as we are, yet without sin. I'm thankful, Father God, that you love us, that you are holy and that you are just, but that you are merciful and that you are gracious. Thank you, Lord. We give you honor and praise. Hallelujah. Praise your name. And Lord, we come to you today with thanksgiving for lives that are well-lived. And we think of Bonita Jervis, Lord, who went home to be with you 92 years she lived on earth and, and a long, long line of descendants she left behind, people that love her and that are going to miss her. But Lord, we thank you for the witness of a life lived for Jesus. And Lord, we bring up some needs for you today. We remember Anna who is still suffering with her asthma. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that you would touch her and heal her. In Jesus' name, heal her from head to toe. For Nancy Burkholder, Lord, who is uh, suffering with anxiety, she's so confused. So Lord, I pray that you would clear her mind right now, uh, that you would just give her a special touch in Jesus' name. For Dennis Reebok, Sue's brother, Lord, as he's been suffering, being, not being able to breathe. Lord, I pray that you'll just touch him and heal him in the name of Jesus. Lord, we've been lifting up Pat's uh, brother, Paul, and uh, with this cancer he's dealing with. Lord, we know that you are the God of all creation. You are the God of everything that we can see and everything that we can't see. So we lift Paul up to you today and pray that you'll minister to him, Father, and touch him with your mighty strong hand. Heal him, Lord. Heal him and just restore him to perfect health. Lord, we ask this in Jesus' name. Uh, we lift up Linda Hansot to you today in the hospital in Pittsburgh. She needs your touch, Lord. Uh, she needs to be restored. And we pray right now, wherever she's at, that she will have a special sense of your presence as you wrap your arms around her and restore her health in the name of Jesus. Father, we continue to lift up Trenton Rots and Tony Moberly. Lord, you know the needs and the, the, the list that Trenton is on and what Tony is suffering with. Lord, I pray that you would just restore and heal in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for a praying church. Thank you, Lord, for a church that believes in the power of prayer and, and more so the, the power of God with whom we can communicate. Lord, Elaine uh, lifted up her co-worker's mom dealing with lung cancer. Oh, God, will you just defeat that cancer in the name of Jesus? We stand against it in the authority of the name of Jesus. And, Lord, the, the kids and the teachers and the anxiety on both sides that is being raised, what, what's going to happen next? How are they going to get their time in? Uh, how long are they going to end up going to school this summer? And all these unknown things. Father, I pray that... You are the God of order. You are the God of order, the God that ordered everything that we see in creation and the God that orders our steps. I pray that you will grant order in the educational system, Lord, that the right decisions will be made, uh, that there would be no confusion, but that there would be calm. Lord, we love you and we lift you up. And Lord, with the little snafu that we had here with... with uh, uh, 
seeing comments, Lord, if there were some that were raised that I cannot see, Lord, they, they come up before your throne, Lord. And I pray that you would meet these needs according to your riches and glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this time together for every single person that's in this room today. Lord, we give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Something happened the other day that reminded me how our memories work. We were, uh, Melody had Pandora, uh, a lot of you know what that is, playing on our TV in our living room. And it was on kind of a, uh, an eclectic mix of music. And there was a song that came on from somewhere in the 70s. And it took me back to my early teen years and immediately in my mind, it put me in a place. Uh, uh, I grew up uh, south of Dillsburg and a friend of mine that lived down the street, they had a farm and they had a building in back of the house that was, I guess it was an old chicken house or something, I don't know. But we used to hang out back there. And somehow I remembered being in that chicken house, hanging out uh, with my friend Steve. Well, that took me back quite a few years, and uh, but the memory was vivid. I could I could see uh, the uh, couch that was there and the chairs, and I could see the building. And I thought, isn't that interesting how certain things trigger our memories? A lot of you remember the day that uh, JFK was assassinated. Now, I was 10 days old. I was 10 days old on November 22nd, 1963. But uh, certainly there are many of you that are watching now that can remember exactly where you were. And after his assassination, there was one major change that was made, that whenever there was a presidential parade of any kind, from that day on, the presidents were in vehicles, enclosed vehicles with bulletproof glass. So after that happened, after that event happened, things were never the same. Uh, many more of us can remember 9-11, September 11, 2001, where we were, what we were doing, what we were feeling at that time. I was in a hotel room in Louisville, Kentucky, and I was getting ready to head out to do my laundry. And I thought, well, I'll check the news. And I turned on the TV just as the second plane hit the tower. I will never forget where I was, how I was feeling, all of the things going through my mind. And, and things changed drastically, didn't they, in our society, in our world, after that event. We had the development of the Department of Homeland Security, among other things, and our lives were forever changed. Another event that I can remember clearly where I was was when the Space Shuttle Challenger blew up. I remember the road I was on, I was making a turn, when I heard it on the radio, I could take you there today. Uh, yesterday was the 41st anniversary of the Three Mile Island incident. There again, I can remember we lived in Dillsburg and so we were fairly close uh, to TMI. I remember the people coming door to door with instructions that if they should have to evacuate, here's what would uh, be done. So these things, everything changed when these major events happened and the memories cement these experiences. Well, this COVID-19 thing that we're all going through is the first event of its kind for most of us. Uh, this is not something we've had to deal with. Uh, it's very difficult. Uh, we have anything from uh, the people who are panicking in fear to the other extreme where it's all a big conspiracy and the government's trying to control us somewhere in between there, there's some truth, right? So we do have to be careful and it is going to change things forever. There's no doubt about it. Uh, we were out at Walmart getting some things uh, Friday, I guess it was, and it was remarkably uh, uncrowded. And I was watching people at the checkout lines, keeping their six foot distance from each other, keeping it very well. Everybody was using the antiseptic wipes when they walked in to clean things off. There's no doubt about it that it's going to affect uh, everything that we do. So 
Here's the other thing about that. The future is unknown. We still don't know what's going on. People are saying, what are you going to do for Easter? <laughs> well, I'll let you know a couple of days before, you know, there's just no real way. And I've, you know, I'm working on some things to try to keep creative ways. And it seems like every time I work on something, it's, it's one step forward and two steps back, but we can't get too anxious about it. We just kind of have to roll with it. One thing is for sure, we won't soon forget what we're going through. See, God created us with a capacity for memory for a reason. We can see examples in Scripture, especially in the Old Testament, where God went to great lengths to be sure that his people would remember. Today we're going to look into the book of Joshua, if you want to get your Bibles ready. And uh, coming to the end of 40 years of wandering through the desert, uh, God's people Israel had been delivered from Egypt, from slavery. Uh, a, a trip from Egypt to the promised land should have only taken a couple of weeks. And because of their disobedience, they ended up spending 40 years walking in circles in the desert. Something that could have happened very quickly uh, took forever, it seems, I'm sure, to these people. And the idea of the 40 years was so that the disobedient generation uh, would be all gone. As a matter of fact, there's only two of them that ended up going into the promised land. We'll get to that a little bit sooner. But here we are. Let's, let's go to this time in history. The, the nation of Israel is um, ready to cross, ready to cross the Jordan River you know, into the east, uh, eastern border of Jericho. Uh, getting ready to, to enter the promised land. And they're camped on the banks of the Jordan River and they're getting ready to go. And after three days of waiting, uh, the officers went around the camp and they gave orders to all of the people. And they said, when you see the Ark of the Covenant being carried by the priests, follow them. They said, now keep your distance. They were practicing social distancing, even back then. He, they, the officers told the people, keep your distance, but when you see the priests going in with the Ark of the Covenant, you stay 200 to, or 2,000 cubits behind. Well, everybody knows what a cubit is, right? Now it's about 3,000 feet. Keep 3,000 feet behind. So Joshua then gave some more orders to the people, and he told them, he said, consecrate yourself. Well, what does that mean? Well, it means make yourself holy. So if I were to say today, consecrate yourself, you can think of a number of ways that you would do that. You would, you would fix your thoughts on the Lord. Uh, you would come before him in repentance, right? You would cleanse yourself. In this case, we can just say, uh, Jesus, wash me again in your, in your blood. Forgive me of my sin. So this is what he was encouraging the people to do, preparing themselves, make yourself holy. And Joshua said, because tomorrow God's going to blow your socks off. That's a paraphrase. That's the Beitzel paraphrase. Basically, that's what he told them. Tomorrow, God is just going to do amazing things. So the next day, uh, the priests set out carrying the Ark of the Covenant uh, into the Jordan River. And as soon as they set foot into the river, the river began to back up and this gray wall of water had built up and then where the priests were, they walked into the riverbed on dry ground. The priests stopped in the middle of what would be a raging river because it was at flood stage during that time. This would have been harvest time. So they're right in the middle of what would be overflowing its banks and here's this huge wall of water. And while the priests were in the middle the whole nation, all 12 tribes worth of the nation of Israel passed by on dry ground. Well, that's a little bit of the before story. Now I'd like us to go and see what the word has to say from this point on. We'll just take a few verses at a time.